What is up you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now honestly you guys, I'm low-key going insane with staying inside for this long. Like I'm pissed, I'm frustrated, I'm sad and I'm bored but at least my apartment is cozy and not like anything on this list. If I was stuck in any of these houses for the next three months, I actually would just give up on life. So with that being said, these are the top 10 scary houses you wouldn't want to be quarantined in. Starting us off with number 10 is Rose Hall Part 1. Now this one is a lot to digest so listen up. Rose Hall was built back in 1770 in Jamaica and was home to Annie Palmer and her husband and it was also a sugarcane plantation. Yes, it was one of those times Yikes. A while into their marriage, Annie got bored of her husband and started sleeping with slaves on the plantation, but in order to keep them quiet, she would either kill them or get other slaves to kill them. And this woman's evil legit knows no bounds. She poisoned her first husband for his wealth, and then later killed her second and third husband as well. Her sexual rendezvous continued, and anyone that didn't comply would end up in the 16 feet deep pit she had dug under the house. She's like the Jamaican Marie Laveau, and it gets worse. It gets so much worse, it's not even funny. Coming in at number 9 is Rose Hall Part 2. Now, Annie actually grew up in Haiti and had learned voodoo from her nanny, which eventually earned her the nickname the White Witch on the island. Apparently, one of her housekeepers had caught the eye of one of her lovers, and she performed a fatal voodoo spell on her. Now, later, the grandfather of that housekeeper later strangled Annie to death, and she was kept in a coffin located in the eastern wing of the hall. Anyone who moved there after claimed they saw many apparitions, including including that of Annie and all the people that she had killed. This lady was crazy, you guys, and honestly, if I could get the apparitions that were against her on my side, I wouldn't mind living in that house, but I mean, if they hated me, it would just it would just be hell, really. At number eight, we have Lemp Mansion. Located in St. Louis, Missouri, this mansion has seen its fair bit of tragedy, probably enough tragedy for a lifetime. Not even gonna lie to you. Now, this mansion has 33 rooms altogether and was built by William Lemp sometime in the 1860s. William and his wife had four sons, and after their youngest, Frederick, died, William ended up committing suicide shortly after. So death count right now is at two. A few years later, William's wife died of cancer in the house, which makes death count at three. By 1922, William Jr. ended up shooting himself in the same room his dad committed suicide in. Death count at four. If that honestly isn't horrible enough, in 1949, William's third son, Charles, shot his dog in the basement of the house and then went up to his bedroom and killed himself. Death count, six. The house ended up being sold the same year and turned into a boarding house when obviously the hauntings began. So I don't know about you, but I would legit not go outside for the next months instead of having to live in this house. I'm not living there. No. Filling on the seventh slot, we have Haunt Mansion. Photographer Seth Lawless traveled around the US to find 13 abandoned haunted houses, and Haunt Mansion in Brush Park, Michigan was one of them. Now, back in the 1940s, the mansion was actually a brothel for upscale gentlemen, and sometimes upscale gentlemen can be the scum of the earth. Years later, after its closure, countless dead bodies were found in the cellar of the mansion, and there was peculiar detail with each one. Each body had a perfect circle on their torso and chest area. The house itself is falling apart, it's decrepit, and I would not want to be inside there for the life of me. And if we're talking about quarantining in that house, where they drew circles on dead bodies like some satanic Cult, then my answer is 150% no. Now, at number six is the House of Death. I didn't even make up that title, that's actually what the house is called, and how ominous is that? Located in Greenwich Village, New York, this house was constructed back in the 1850s, and a record 22 people have died in this house. And yes, that means the house is also haunted by 22 ghosts, which is honestly. 25 more than I'd like. Mark Twain lived in the house at the beginning of the 1900s and his ghost has been seen on the first floor near the staircase. The family home was turned into a 10 unit apartment building and the first couple that moved in there felt a monstrous moving shadow just looming over them at all times. The actress Jan Bartel, who felt the shadow wrote a memoir about her experiences at the house, how she felt hands brushing her neck and this rotting odor that was just always present. She'd have visions of seeing people and when the couple called a medium, the person felt many dead things under the floorboards. Safe to say, unless these 22 ghosts are paying rent, I'm not sharing a house with them, quarantining with them, or otherwise. Oh, hell no. Miss me with that sh 
Coming in at number 5 is the Whaley House. Located in San Diego, the house was built on the execution grounds of James Robinson, aka Yankee Jim. In the year 1852, he was convicted of grand larceny and sentenced to death. While setting up his noose, the hangman did it wrong, which meant Jim's feet were able to graze the ground, making his hanging even longer. Four years later, Thomas Whaley bought the land and built his house, and his youngest daughter Lillian claimed she'd hear the ghost of Jim just around the house. Boots walking around, sinister laughing, and the sound of boots scraping the ground like they would have been while he was being hanged. And as appealing as this house sounds to be quarantined in, I will pass. At number four is the Joshua Ward House. Located in Essex County, the house belonged to Sheriff George the Strangler Corwin back in the day, and he may not ring a bell, but he was actually the high sheriff of the county during the Salem Witch Trials. He was known throughout the county to strangle the accused by tying necks and heels, which means he would force a person's body into hoops, and he would rope their neck to their feet until blood came gushing out of their mouth and nose. Everyone hated this man. He even stoned an eight-year-old farmer to death who refused to stand trial for witchcraft. Like, come on, George, the guy's 80 years old. Give him a break, right? George ended up having a heart attack later on and died. His family was so scared a riot crowd would dismember his body that they interned his body in their house's cellar. The house is now a bed and breakfast called The Merchant and is apparently one of the most haunted houses in New England. And I'm not trying to be here for any of that considering I'd be stuck there for months. <laughs> no. Filling on number three slot is the Cottage in Belmeth. Located in Spain, this cottage was built on top of burial grounds that dated back to 1830. Maria Gomez Pereira lived in the house and in 1971 she discovered a face looking up at her from the kitchen floor. It wasn't a 2D ghost, it was a face made from plaster casting and it seemed like the face was just rising from the dead from underneath the house. Freaked out and worried, Maria and her neighbours decided to get rid of the face by chipping away at it with an axe, but that ended up revealing even more more face casts of old men, of little children, you name it. No one even knows who made them, how they got there, why they were there, nothing. But I for one wouldn't even live in this house let alone be stuck in it. Who's living there? Who is living there? Maria! Get out! Now in number two is Charles. This one's from Isabella Morris who shared that her aunt moved into a house where an entire family had died previously due to a fire. I would honestly not move into that house knowing that information but I mean... <laughs> people are ballsy. Anyway, her aunt's oldest son's room used to be in the basement and he recalled having horrifying nightmares involving a man called Charles who had no face and glowing red eyes. Charles would drag him off his bed and into open flames and the son saw he could feel his skin actually burning like it just felt all too real to be a dream. It was so bad that he crawled to the corner of his room just crying. Mind you, he's a 20 year old man. Can you imagine being so scared of a dream that you're literally just in the corner of your room in a ball crying? Can you imagine being stuck in that basement till September in quarantine with zero windows or natural light, wondering what you did to deserve that? Screw you, COVID-19. Screw you. And finally, at number one is the rattling. This story was shared by James, who said every night at 3am, he would hear sounds coming from the vents on his ceiling. He assumed it was the AC or some small rodent in the piping, but eventually the sounds changed to what sounded like a pill bottle rattling in his roommate's bathroom. This started happening every night at 3am sharp for months. Other times he would just be sitting on the couch watching TV and he'd feel like someone just came and sat down next to him. James reported the feeling of being watched at all times and not that it seemed threatening, he just didn't enjoy the potential ghosts that could be living in his house. Things went horribly wrong though one night when at 3.30am both roommates camped outside the bathroom, heard the rattling and then went inside. They turned the lights on to find blood in the sink and on the light switch despite neither of them bleeding and no one being in the bathroom. That's a major, super, big fat no from me. And that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're living in better circumstances than the houses that I mentioned today. Let me know how you're doing, as I'd love to know. As always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. A few years later, William's...